Hello Visual Effects people, I'm AK and this is Fluid Ninja Live introducing level contents. I'm getting into the tutorial subfolder for levels and as you could see we have 19 different levels here demonstrating uh, Ninja Live functions, uh, doing benchmarking, some level levels are prepared for uh, mobile compiling so all kind of different functions and very quickly getting through all these. The first level is really uh, just an introduction demonstrating how Ninja Live is a painter and this painter is mapped on various geometries in 3D and extended with the fluid simulator and in the end we have something uh, that looks like uh, spatially extended although it's just a two-dimensional simulation Ah, and by the way, um, we could um, embed this simulation to pawns and vehicles and all that stuff. Uh, for example, at this scene we have a short instruction how to possess the pawn, simply by enabling this switch here. And once we possess the pawn, we could approach this pit and encounter the first complex fluid simulation scene. Complex because we could push uh, physical objects around, we have a light source, some ray marching, and <coughs> and the skeletal mesh character walking in this pit. But let's continue our journey. And here is uh, where we reveal uh, the fake. Basically, it's just a camera facing plane, and we are projecting uh, object collision on this camera facing plane and making it look spatially extended. And we have the same setup here as in the pit, but without noises and shading and stuff. So it's just a really simple two-dimensional fluid simulation. But again, uh, it's nice to see how simple things could be leveled up a little bit. So anyway, at the end of this scene, um, you could notice the purple uh, icon. And with the edit blueprint, or in the content browser going to ninja live root clicking on the help blueprint you could get into this one it's like um, a blueprint version of the already available manual we have loads of text here which um, is like uh, the main points of how to use ninja how to merge it to your project how to embed it into your actors and we have a few flowcharts and uh, these flowcharts uh, might be uh, a bit better here than um, watching it in a PDF because you could zoom in and you could really uh, navigate and find uh, details and figure out how Ninja is built, how components are embedded into each other and we also have a flowchart describing how uh, the core fluid simulation is working including all these vector scalar transformations and all these have a look in case if you're interested but anyway i'm getting back to the levels so this was the end of level one an introductory level and let's load in level two <coughs> level two is like a collection of uh, key functions and uh, these key functions include how to uh, make uh, a simulation collide with a single object or collide with multiple objects and what shall we do if an object is moving extremely fast like with normal setup we can't trace that you could see that on the left it's <laughs> very buggy but we have an, an option which makes interpolation between the points and then we could track super fast motion as well Aha, this is an interesting feature it is demonstrating uh, what I would call the time dilatation or bullet time. Let me um, remove uh, this object from here and do the thing with the mouse cursor. As you could see, <laughs> the faster I move the cursor, the faster the fl fluid is moving. So it's like uh, influencing the time step. <laughs> influencing the time step of uh, the fluid simulation with the velocity of the object that is inside the simulation area. Uh -huh. uh, this one is about tiling. You could notice that the 
side ratio and the size of these uh, simulation areas quite different although uh, the thing looks similar in all these areas and we have a few useful switches and tips how to achieve this uh -huh. this is responding uh, response to object size small object makes small trails uh, this one is uh, a key thing uh, it is buffer visualization because ninja live is working with uh, six different buffers including divergence pressure and velocity density and these buffers are all accessible uh, for the user and in the output materials so you could really freely use them to drive whatever you would like to drive uh, i'm quitting the simulation and at stage eight we have a short instruction how to switch on the preset manager so i'm just going to the details panel and i'm simply enabling it and here we go the preset manager on the left and let me quickly roll down to the bottom and here we have like uh, output material previews and i'm going to this uh, density buffer preview and uh, here's a simple translucent version here's the velocity buffer uh, pressure divergence and uh, for example divergence is very good for refraction and to distort meshes with third position offset anyways uh, if we move forward at this stage uh, we could see how brush persistency and uh, feedback is demonstrated like uh, at the top in the brush section if I set uh, the persistence higher in this case it is 0 0.8 as a very high number the brush is basically leaving uh, very long lived trails and the next setup is demonstrating how the whole thing could be turned into um, a colorful um, visual by tone mapping and again I'm uh, selecting this container called uh, called out material and I'm changing the old material to the next one and I'm drawing here into the middle and I'm turning the thing into a burning flaming whatever and it's just tone mapping like we have this grayscale image and the dark tones are mapped to bluish hue and the light ones to to golden why is it important oh by the way you could close uh, well minimize the preset manager with this button here uh, because later on ah. I'm just jumping there directly so uh, at stage 14 we have a demonstration how uh, RGB color images could be processed so it's not necessary to use monochromatic images it's just a bit faster and easier to handle anyway uh, what do we have uh -huh. we have like a brush noising so we have a single brush stroke but still it's like a spatially distributed uh, a cloud of points brush random let me set it to a higher number ah oh, it's totally random now and to zero it's like a single line uh -huh. this one is very important puncture uh, guess what it's a two-dimensional fluid simulation and so how do we handle the velocity which is perpendicular to the fluid simulation plane a puncture is explaining this and finally yes uh, we have this RGBA thing and the next one is level 3 so I'm quitting level 2 going to the content browser uh -huh. level 3, three is uh, demonstrating uh, possible density inputs and let me quickly walk through it's like a simple texture turned into fluid simulation a simple texture combined with a velo velocity texture by the way these fluid simulation containers are uh, slightly overlapping and I was able to make like a continuous large area anyway so it was just static textures and in the next few cases you could witness like uh, animated materials this, this black uh, part here is like the original material which I made like expanding rings 
and this one is channeled into the fluid simulation. Uh, here we have an instruction to enable the preset manager. So let me quickly first uh, quit the pawn. I'm telling uh, Ninja Live Utility to stop processing the pawn and I'm enabling the preset manager. Yep, returning to the level. All right, so you, you have you seen this yellow uh, rectangle? That's a selection. And so what do we have here? Um, as you could see, the amplitude is 8.0. What if I inverse this value? Well, the whole thing is starting to uh, look like it's, it's sucking in this fluid. And what if I add some rotation? Yep. The whole visual uh, could be changed very easily, and it is based on this animated material. Uh, the same concept is applied here. We have this cracky floor thing animated with this expanding ring, and here we go. Uh, you have uh, smoke coming out of these floor cracks. Uh -huh. It's a similar concept again. It's like a portal thing. It's really just uh, concentric impulses. Uh, what next? Um, it is a scene capture camera. I'm capturing this wide moving ball and applying fluid simulation on it and I have the whole scene feedback into the level. And finally, this is media input, which is uh, in this very example just a loopy video file uh, I have included with the project. And I could draw on this canvas as well, but you could feed live video stream as well. So it, it might be used very differently, uh, not necessarily in, in game engines. Uh, shortly, that's uh, level three with density inputs. Let's see what we have level four. Yeah, it's demonstrating vert space velocity, which means your fluid simulation container is moving in the world. Uh, no, <laughs> yes. I'm standing in this muddy puddle and as you could see, yeah, by the way, do you see these four sliders? One of them is to zoom in, others are to set the level lightning and such. But anyway, so as you could see, this fluid is behaving a bit inertly because we are applying acceleration and vert space velocity to the simulation. And if you have a look at the, the glowing hands of the pawn, a similar uh, mechanism could be spotted. So word space velocity is very useful if you would like to imitate inertia. Yeah, same thing here. And my personal favorite is the what's cooking scene. Let me just push this little thing here onto this uh, steering plateau and watch how the fluid is being steered. Yeah, shortly that's about word space velocity. Level number five is a very simple level with only two stages and is demonstrating. Uh, do you see these radio controllers? Uh, well, I'm telling you, these radio controllers are located here in the content browser and they are called um, interface controller. <coughs> Basically, they uh, have been made to remote control Ninja Live agents. The first container will uh, simply fade out and shut down the container. And the second is uh, adjusting brush uh, size. So have a look. <coughs> you see the first container has been faded out, shut down, and the memory has been returned to the pool manager. And the second one is adjusting brush size, no matter if, it is, if the brush is driven by an object or I remove the object from the area and I'm going to draw there with the mouse doesn't matter, uh, the container is being influenced by this uh, remote uh, brush size thing. Uh, right on, interface control. Uh, let's move on to the next level. Number six, destructibles. <coughs> yep. Uh, the level has to be restarted to have this uh, thing repeated again and again. But as you can see, I'm moving around with the camera doesn't matter, the view angle doesn't really matter.
and by the way we have the remote controller here and it's uh, again killing the simulation when uh, the explosion has happened um, that's the thing and we have a few more uh, things in the corner but let's just move on to level 7 yeah ninja was already uh, ninja life was already finished when I have realized that uh, the whole system is uh, capable of detecting other objects and painting collisions to meshes and why not use this whole system to drive a simple painter without fluid simulation as you could see it's like a, a noisy brush here and I'm using brush velocity to make a, a simple texture flow so you could use the whole thing uh, to paint flow maps and by the way uh, do you think I have the, the preset manager somewhere because in case if I would have and why not let's just drop it on level uh, I'm going to the fluid ninja live root folder I'm selecting preset manager oh <laughs> there it is silly me so it was already prepared anyway so I'm just switching on the preset manager and so what do we have here uh, this flow map like thing and in the preset manager uh, let's check if it is selected or not yep have you seen the yellow highlight all right I'm setting the brush brush persistence to to one that's the highest volume basically what I draw here remains there it's not going to fade out so I have drawn this toroid shape and it's flowing around and I'm scrolling down to the bottom of preset manager and you see here a save paint buffer uh, and you will not see but I have like a pop-up window here and I pressed it twice for density and velocity and let's see what do we have in the output folder uh, probably if we put it where the presets are ah yeah or maybe I show you uh -huh. I hope you can see this is the uh, the velocity map of the painting and this is the density map so basically the preset manager and the simple painter together could be used to uh, mm, as, as a flow map painter or even as a simple painter but anyway it, it might be used uh, for visual effects as well and here we go uh, this is like a simple painter mapped uh, to a camera facing plane and it looks like a, a spatially extended thing and it's combined with with the flow map and it's using a single render target so it's much cheaper GPU wise and memory wise than using a fluid simulation and still uh, nice effects could be achieved even with, with multiple objects so much about the simple painter level and let's move on uh, to this demo level called roots one of my favorite I call it roots because the whole thing looks a bit organic and it's an artifact I was overdriving velocity noise and stop uh, stopped the animation of the velocity noise and suddenly it, it froze like a static uh, fractal that is <laughs> driving the fluid <laughs> looks weird and it's not smoke it's like uh, I don't know like salt or sand but anyway it looks nice and might be used uh, later on for something experimental so that's the roots level ah, and by the way it was using like oh <laughs> I was possessing the middle pawn floating in the middle and it is with ray marching yep all right uh, the swimmers that's a funny level because uh, I had like proper swimming animation here not anymore because it was like a copyrighted content I have removed it and now we have like the pawn walking upside down and a few more things uh, worth the notice and it uh, looks a bit like water partly because of the refraction and the refraction is driven by the divergence buffer as I have mentioned any buffer could be used in the output material for anything so you could use pressure for color you could drive particles with this whatever you would like to uh, but basically it's demonstrating it's not just smoke and flames but even water like surface with, with distortion and refraction that we could use uh, and create okay uh, let's move on to the next level uh, it's called the fluid blast it's level number 10 so I'm approaching the first container it's stage 2 
and you might have seen this um, on Twitter because that was an early test video uh, with this physical body a sphere roll into the puddle and I'm even drawing and steering the puddle and moving on to the next yeah one important thing to notice yeah, I'm zooming it a little bit yeah, nice to push these things around here right on so I'm moving on to the next one the red oh yeah so one thing I would like to show you is that uh, we have these sliders and since the ray marching is uh, linked to the main uh, light on this level I could influence it in real time with these sliders what other possibilities we have for ray marching well I would be able to to attach it to the character for example do you think we should do that well yeah let's give it a try uh, I'm selecting this the, the red container and I'm just checking what the mannequin is called like uh, in the word outliner he's called third person character right so I'm getting into the red container selecting the component getting into the ray marching and I'm telling him to follow third person character and use position as the light source so hopefully um, we're gonna see this red container uh, behaving like or character would be the light source and yes do you see these shadows moving the container is behaving like uh, like the mannequin the pawn would be uh, would be the light source <laughs> it might be totally unorthodox but how about uh, do you think I would be able to select it in the word outliner third person character and I wonder if I could get like a, a handle for this oh no because I, I have to eject the pawn anyway I won't be able to move it like a chess figure anyways so this is how ray marching works I could attach it to any object anyway that was level 10 let's move on to level 11 it's called the smoke chamber and I'd really like to push these large spheres around and watch them uh, pushing the smoke around and I could walk in we have some uh, camera fading on, on the smoke ah by the way how about removing this guy very annoying and just having a run here ah, by the way I'm zooming in a little bit and as you could see I'm mm, again I'm setting the light direction and just pushing the ball a little bit mm -hmm. and it's pushing the smoke a little bit again having a look at the light direction mm -hmm. I'm trying to jump in the smoke thing so much about the smoke chamber um, level 12 is an interesting concept because I was trying to uh, build a level uh, with a multitude of overlapping containers and you, you could see in the top left corner you're continuously um, accessing and letting uh, render targets there's like uh, only four or five of these containers are active simultaneously and they are talking with the memory manager and once they are out of sight uh, they release the memory and so another container could use it this is a very good uh, practical demonstration on how uh, the memory manager could be used to spare uh, render target memory and how the whole system could be used efficiently to populate levels so that was level 12 uh, here we have a stress test and benchmarking levels uh, this one is like uh, the smoke chamber what with many many of these smoke uh, things it's coming like a train <laughs> whoa <laughs> yeah I'm waiting a little bit 
to make this guy appear again uh -huh, and is dashing through the smoke so it's a good good level to test performance and all these levels uh, performance peak yeah we have a few curious containers here uh, this one is worth to have a look it's running in 4k which means I could zoom in extremely and it's um, it's a very primitive demonstration, but I was testing if, if Ninja is able to run a 4K or even bigger containers, mm, and yeah, it was working fine. So by selectively disabling these containers, you could measure maximum performance. And uh, the next level is demonstrating memory pooling in its purest form, uh, similar to the Mist Valley scene. Uh, this yellow agent is the activator. And as it moves, it is selectively waking up the containers. And as it moves out of the activation area, containers go back to sleep and release their memory. So this is how large levels could be populated with fluid simulation containers. And still, it's just eight uh, units of memory used. And it's eight units that are uh, simultaneously active. It's a good concept for memory pooling and LOD. Performance stress. Yeah, that level is killing it. It's really an FPS dropper. It's like 64 containers running simultaneously. And it's really good for, <laughs> for benchmarking and I it's very not advised to use it in game. Oh, by the way, uh, this level is with the simple painter and we have 64 containers, but it's not causing a performance drop at all. So simple painter cannot be killed. It's very efficient. Uh, then the last two levels are for mobile mobile you could compile them instantly and have a multi-touch sensor or uh, here's this this mist valley one thing i you should be aware of you see uh, that it, it looks like uh, collisions are flipped upside down and i'm telling you why it is because render targets are flipped upside down and it is because uh, it is prepared for android es 3.1 and it's uh, using a very silly method to handle render targets. Let me select this one container, going to the details, Ninja Live component, compatibility, and here, flip render targets for mobile. I'm telling you that early tests suggest that Oculus and any other VR device using the same trick. So in case if you would like to test VR, I advise you to switch on this uh, flip render targets mode in the compatibility. Right, that's it. We are uh, at the end, no more levels, and hope you're gonna have a nice time and you could figure out how Ninja works looking at these examples. And again, uh, I advise you to have a look at this uh, built in help and the online tutorials and manuals. Yep. Surely that's it. And thank you for your patience and see you next time.